technique B3, the flexed hip squish. I'm gonna bring Chris's knees up and then I'm gonna squish through the femur to check for or mobilize anterior torsion of that ilium. You can see here that because of the offset of the, of the iliofemoral joint and the sacral leg joint, if I squish straight posteriorly with the femur, it actually drives a little bit of anterior torsion at that ilium, at the SI joint. Now we found on Chris in that last assessment, we found actually he was already easy there, so I wouldn't necessarily do this technique on that side if I'm thinking mobility. I would actually do the next technique, posterior torsion, but I'll go ahead and demonstrate this technique so you know how to do it if you'd found somebody that didn't uh, move as easy in an anterior direction. So with the uh, uh, femur vertical, my hand under his PSIS just for my own uh, picture of what's going on and a little bit of stabilization. I just put some pressure down toward the floor through his femur. I'm lifting a little bit on the PSIS to encourage that anterior torsion of the right ilium in this case. Is that all right? Yeah, I can feel it very clearly. Even without any pressure from your finger, I can feel the femur will will initiate that, that anterior movement. It doesn't take much. It's a powerful technique. It's a powerful mobilizer and produces a lot of sensation. We got the weight of his leg. We got my weight there. So it's a good, it's good one to go slow with and be cautious with and just use the minimal amount of pressure you need. And again, I wait for an autonomic response or a drift in mobility and then come out of that. Any questions? So can you demonstrate using less hip flexion to feel for restricted posterior glide and then more hip flexion to feel for restricted anterior torsion? Yeah, this can be used for either one. There's a note in the book. As I showed it with that vertical femur, it really is about anterior torsion. Yeah, and again, I'll show that on the skeleton so you can get a clear picture of that. If I have a vertical hip, I can, I'm an putting anterior torsion onto that right side. Yeah. But if I wanted to, I could bring his femur down and actually push the ilium the other way in relationship to the SI joint. It's a little less effective because I don't have as much gravity on my side, but a squish, say, in this direction can actually bring his ilium into posterior torsion. We have other ways to do this, too, that are probably where you have more leverage, but that's, this is a possible option for that. Now, the other thing you mentioned there, though, in the book, though, is we can kind of find... We can tune it. We can find an angle that has the most uh, resistance or stiffness to mobilize there too, to encourage some more movement with my pressure in that position or angle. Is that good? Any other questions? Can you just clarify um, what you're doing? I think you might have alluded to what you were doing with the underside yep. hand. Is yep. it lifting? Absolutely. So we're treating his right side. I had this hand on his PSIS, this hand on the femur. Can I put this right here? And so then as I squish the femur, I was lifting or rolling the ilium the other way to encourage that whole bone to move in that direction. And then I did the opposite from this angle. I actually pushed it down a little bit to encourage a little bit of the posterior torsion. Okay. But for myself, I'm just picturing what I want that bone to do. Okay. And using all these things as handles to get it to do that. Okay, so there's also a picture there of two, two knees at once. Why don't you bring your knees up, Chris? And I'm going to come up on the table for that. And this, again, a lot of caution. A lot of caution is indicated because now I have the weight of two legs and I have all of my body weight there, pushing his ilia backwards toward the table. So I could think about this as posterior glide. Or like that last technique too, I can think about it like anterior torsion of that ilia. And this, is, this does allow me to compare left and right, and I feel a difference. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah. That's less mobile on that left side. Yeah, I agree. So that's, I can just stay there on that less mobile side and let it drift into some of that anterior torsion combined with some posterior glide. Stabilizing. Is that okay? That amount of pressure? Yeah. I feel it's not a resistance that's uncomfortable, but I feel a resistance. Yeah. 
And I'm not pushing much, just because I'm keeping in mind how powerful this technique can be. It's a powerful mobilizer. And if you get too carried away with it, you could irritate that joint. But the mobilization itself is usually calming. It feels good. When we mobilize things, we're pumping the fluids through them a little bit, hydrating them. That helps normalize their physiology, so any inflammatory processes get calmed. It's helping normalize the sensation, so any sensitive nerves get a different kind of impulse and feel a little better. Okay, and then coming out for a second, and then rechecking left and right. What's, what's different from your side? I, I can feel the possibility of it more clearly. Like yeah. I can tell I can let go more. Yeah. Um, it feels like it could be more work to be done, but it's, it's changing. And that helps me tune the angle a little bit, too, so I get another slight direction here that feels stiffer. It gives me good feel. I can feel that. And I'm pushing here right through into the floor. Sliding his left ilium backwards. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Okay, next technique. Oh, I love it. You know, I think a, a big part of the work for me is the diagnostics, uh, checking what I'm doing. You know, you're asking questions and seeing what the client is feeling. They're not just laying there on the table.